Rusty Toe Morgan. This is from Rock Point School writer Kevin Jones, who you'll meet in a minute. Characters are Stage Directions by Alex Nicosia. Part of Sarah will be played by Izzy Bertoni. There she is. Part of Wendy by Margaret Garofalo. Joyce Flanagan will play the part of Mom. And the part of Monty, played by an actor of enormous range. Me. <laughs> All I gotta do is find it. Please stand by. <laughs> All right. Frosty Toe Morgue, a 10 minute play by Kevin Jones. Characters Monty, Morgue Manager, 52. Sarah, Dead Valley Girl, 17. Wendy, Sassy Dead Woman, 80. <laughs> Mom, Rotting Corpse, 73. <laughs> Scene Frosty Toe Morgue. At Rise, Monty enters with clipboard. Another day, another corpse. <laughs> I just got here and I can't wait until I leave. How on earth did I even end up here? I'm not dead. I guess my teachers were kidding when they said I wouldn't have a dead end job. <laughs> Sits at desk. You know what, I think, I think things would have turned out a whole hell of a lot different if my mom was still around. She was such a good motivator, always by my side. <laughs> Monty walks over to first table, slides off blanket. Well, hello there, miss. Looks at Toe. Sarah, <laughs> don't you smell good? Examines. <laughs> uh, you know, you look all right for getting hit by a bus. <laughs> at least my mom died peacefully, not with all of her blood all over her windshield. Oh, my mom, she was such a great woman. Why did she have to go? It's been a year and I'm just getting myself back together. Oh, I'm such a mess. Pull it together, Monty. <laughs> She was so, oh God, she was so sensational. <laughs> Sobbing. Can you shut the hell up? <laughs> I am literally so done with you. <laughs> Monty falls to the ground and pushes himself away, speechless. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Please relax. Just chill out. Why are you alive? Why are you sitting up? Please stop. Why are you talking? What did you do? I've been drugged. Oh, crap. Okay, 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 okay. Stop. I can't stand being stared at like I'm so dead all the time. Like, I'm some sort of zombie. You are a zombie! <laughs> it's so freaking annoying. Yeah, I know I'm really dead. Like, so dead, deader than a table. But I am clearly still a little bit here. So I would appreciate it if... You could respect that, okay? Why are you alive? <laughs> a little somebody up there wanted to help a little somebody down here. I didn't want to, duh. People die and it's supposed to be like nice and stuff. But no, I can't get a break. <laughs> I know I'm young, but I was like so happy when I realized I wouldn't have cramps anymore. <laughs> I was all like, sounds good to me. <laughs> but now look at me. I'm a therapist, apparently. A hot zombie therapist. But still, so what's your issue? Wendy sits up. Ah! <laughs> I'm so glad you darlings are getting to know each other. <laughs> but it's time for a new variable. Wendy's the name, Wendy Newman. And I'm here to assist the situation at hand, which is clearly... Checks out Monty. A desperate one. <laughs> Take a breath, Monty. You look more dead than me. I mean, as you could imagine, I'm pretty surprised. But, but you guys... You said you wanted to help me, and I need it. Oh, my God. You seem so lovely. <laughs> I'm so glad to meet you. Now, our little friend here is having life issues. You know, the basic American struggle. Hates his job, no kids, no wife, and his mom passed. So sad, so sad. Oh, I am so sorry, doll. Your life sound like, like quite a train wreck. <laughs> yeah, so like, what are we gonna do? Well, we barely know each other. Uh, Sarah, please tell us a little bit about yourself. We can't expect our man of the hour to open up unless we do. 
Well, I was walking back from this crazy party and I was all excited because I saw that I got this Snapchat from my BF. <laughs> I opened it and it was like a picture of her with her tongue out. Ugh. She got a tat on her lip that said hashtag swaggy. I told her I was going to get hashtag soy because I'm like gluten intolerant. <laughs> so I was walking, okay. And there was a busy street to the side of me. And that's when I remembered I needed to call Don. Don was my boyfriend. <laughs> I called him as I was about to cross the street and then it happened. No horn or anything, just a smash. Now that picture right before I got hit, that would get tons of likes online. <laughs> Make smush duck face and pretends to take selfie. I'm sorry, honey, that your piece was disturbed and everything. I never had that difficult of a life, but holy crap, did I have one hell of an appetite. <laughs> oh, I would eat. I couldn't stop. And then, when the 21st century came around and you could spend 400 calories on a six-ounce drink, <laughs> I was screwed. <laughs> My art gave up. I don't blame it either. I felt such guilt for such a long time after, f after I died for letting the food take me and leaving my husband and 14 kids behind. 14? <laughs> Absolutely. Why would I stop getting pregnant? It's the only way I could eat without all of those other women looking at me like I was a glutton. It's honestly the only plus side to having kids. Trust me. Wow. You guys have had very interesting lives. They were kind of sad too, like mine. I wish I would have known you guys. Yeah, I think we would have been like good friends. <laughs> Despite the age difference, you guys are really cool people. Welcome to the party. You want to get rid of us before you know it. Okay, so I'm actually alive here, guys. Where is the advice? I can't just die. Well, I can, but I don't want to. <laughs> are you ready for the plan, Sarah? Yep. Wait, what, what? Sarah runs over to Monty as if she was going to attack him. Look out! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Sarah drops bone saw. That's not funny. <laughs> Don't you think you scared me enough? I'm talking to dead people here. On the other hand, I do have to give you credit. You, you, you had me for a sec there. Look, our lives are over. Neither of us has had that much fun in a while, but, but you're still around. So please, please promise us something. Don't waste your life like we did. Find something you love and then do that. Yeah, at least do that for us, Monty. Let us know our efforts and knowledge, or lack of, <laughs> doesn't go to waste. So I heard you saying something about your mother. Tell us about her. Well, she's my mother and I loved her dearly. Everything went downhill when she left. She died. I was always so rude to her. I was the worst kid ever. <laughs> always ordering her around and taking her for granted. She was a tough woman, but she so easily let me not treat her well. I never got it. That's too bad. Yeah. The, the guilt and realizations I had when she died were too much to handle. I quit my job as a PA and slept for two months. I, I got this job two weeks ago. I mean, it was the only one I could find. <laughs> like a dead end job. Yeah. Car alarm goes off. Oh, no. Someone's trying to break into my car. I'll be right back. Runs off stage. Now that that's taken care of. What on earth are we going to do? Pray calm yourself, I'm thinking. <laughs> what did you just tell me to do? Quiet, quiet. We should tell him his mom says hi or some crap like that, and then we can... Wait, I got it! <laughs> Goes off stage and wheels back third table with mom laying on it with, cl with a cloth over her. Where did you find her? I thought she's been dead. I got some tricks up my sleeve. God gave them to me when I showed him how to wax legs. <laughs> <laughs> she looks so exhausted and burnt out and just, God bless, I don't even know. <laughs> quiet, quiet doll, here he comes. Both Wendy and Sarah try to, com try to cover mom. False alarm, you guys, no need to worry. Oh, good! <laughs> we were concerned. Wait, 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 wait. That table wasn't here before. I wheeled the old Mr. Green in. <laughs> Great guy. Loved him. Such a nice smile. He was very... So, Monty, darling, I am curious. 
What would you say to your mom if you had just one thing to say? Well, I mean, I guess I would say a few things. I would say how much I appreciated everything she did for all of us. I would say how much I loved that she was really strong and always had the most amazing advice, that she could brighten any day. She was a beautiful and bright woman, great cook, by the way. She was just the best mom, and I love her for that. Wendy and Sarah nodding. That's very nice of you, Montwell. I love you, too. <laughs> Monty runs over to the table as curtain falls. The end. <laughs> Kevin, come on up. Come on up, buddy. Please meet the playwright, Kevin Jones. So you are texting your observations to VYP7. They got. Sorry? VYP3, play seven. Sorry about that. Kevin, come on in. Step into the light. You get first crack. Is there anything you've always wanted to know from an audience you'd like them to react to? Um, what do you think about the ending? Everybody is wants it, to know about the ending. Or like, or it, was there like, would you say there's too much, uh, like sensitive, like emotion in it, or was it a good amount? Or? So the ending you're talking about uh, when he's saying what he would say to his mom, and then she sits up. That part yeah. in particular. Okay. Yeah. React to the ending, please. What were your thoughts? Did you watch that go by? Raise your hand, keep it up, it's hard to see. Yes, in the back. I liked it, how it was like a meaningful speech, but he never really expected to see his mom. To um, me, yeah, I almost would have liked to see him continue to see how he reacted to her. Like, I couldn't tell if he was horrified that she was a rotting horse, <laughs> or happy to see her again. Like, I couldn't tell. Yeah. And I was curious. No. Interesting. You want more in the interaction to see. Yeah? Anybody else? Ending? Just right. Here, finger, Bruce. Surprisingly sentimental. Yes, right here. Um, I like how the ending. I like how the emotion. I like how the mom talks. But um, one thing I think was, I would like to see too is since the other two characters, they were supposed to like teach him something. I think if the mom said more and like she had something to say to him afterwards, like it's an ending. Like now go and do this with your life, so that make it more closure. But I like the tone you went there though. Cool. So you wanted to, that made you want to know more, and I think there was some of that in this other comment as well. It gets more interaction. That, that was such a tantalizing setup at the end. Does it get more play, or is it just kind of the other joke? Yeah. I have to say that I, um, that I was really grateful that you didn't go further because it left that with us. Like we kind of get to wonder, but we also get to not have to think too much about <laughs> what is the situation with the dead corpse talking and yeah. you know it just sort of leaves it with I felt like you got to have this closure I liked that I loved where you cut it off I was a little bit afraid it was going to keep going and I was like please let the curtain fall yeah. and it did so that made me happy Thanks. Let me ask you an opposite question. So that was tantalized because you kind of got a bit and you wanted to know more. Were there any parts in it where you felt like it was too much and you kind of wanted it to keep moving? Is there ever a moment in that or were you pretty much with it the whole time? Yeah, I'm about I liked wondering at the end because I think that too often people want to create <coughs> an ending that's very solid and I really enjoy being able to think about what like the possibilities yeah. and having it be an open ended end. Thanks. Anything else? Yes. I think if you had tried to write an ending it might have ended up being a little preachy too and it wasn't. Mm. So that, say more about that. What's preachy and what's not preachy for you? Well, by having to teach the lesson that they were supposed to teach, it might have ended up a little preachy versus us just getting the message through the dialogue and and then having our own, taking our own message from that, <coughs> like what he, what he should do with his life. So one of the things that can happen in plays that feel preachy is that the sense of character kind of goes away and they just kind of become mouthpieces for ideas. Let's do the character test again. Go across the stage. Did you feel like you knew who she was? Mm -hmm. Oh boy, yeah, yeah clear audience. Yeah. <laughs> Margaret's character, did you feel like you yes. the stage, you knew who she was? Oh All right, and well, mom, you know. <laughs> we knew you mostly as dead, but. 
So preachiness is sort of cut back on when you have full-blooded characters who are up having emotions and lives and reactions, right? That's a testament against your writing, right? because that's, that's hard to do in a short period of time. No. Keep your comments coming. Um, the comedy of death. How funny is death? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, maybe that's the answer. Yeah. When is death not funny? Was there any part here was suddenly the uh not funny? Ever? Any false notes? Yeah, here's one. Well, there was possibly the part where the um, where our where our, teen, our young teenage friend described the manner in which she was a kid, or and how the exam, how um, how he described how she had been killed. I mean, that's not exactly the pleasant image. It's like to get cre getting creamed by a bus isn't exactly the most pleasant well, thing to die. Well, taking picture of snap and snap. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. I thought the part where your character said that they didn't want to be alive in the world, <laughs> I thought that was a serious part where death isn't a funny thing, and it brought like just a seriousness to this, like you know nobody should feel that way in the first place. And so it's kind of like the irony of the dead helping not feel dead. <laughs> Anybody else react to that death funny not funny? Yep. Yeah, there's a part where the teenage girl dies like, oh, I'm glad I wanted to have cramps anymore, which was funny. But also, I don't know, sort of seemed like it was implying something a little more. I don't know what I'm saying, but like, the, that's a reason not to live. Like, it just sort of made me question. Yeah. Something. Well, I think what worked so well about the play was that it was really funny. And at the same time, there were so many elements of it that were really real, you know, the idea that he is mourning his mother, the idea that he's kind of a lonely guy, and they didn't feel less real because they weren't funny, they actually felt more real because of the comparison to all the comedy, you know, so, and even the comedic parts felt very real because it, it overall just made it all feel like a really honest play, even though it was completely absurd, you know, it had such a genuine element to it, so. So it's interesting to use the word absurd, so absurdity can just kind of keep it at that comic level, not right. too deep in, and even the comments I heard about individual remarks, those are just moments. Those weren't, those didn't derail you from, okay. from enjoying the rest of the play. So that's about consistency of tone, Kevin. You set a tone and you kept it all the way through instead of turning on a dime in the middle and doing something the audience didn't expect. Yeah. Any last comments before we move right along? Yes, one back here. I really like the character of Monty who was alive. I thought he was a very good <coughs> counterpoint, maybe, and I don't know, even though it's sort of like the character whose life is screwed up and has to have an, have advice from ghosts and sometimes they kind of always the same or stiff, I felt like he was a real character. He wasn't just there to get advice. Yeah. Enjoy the experience? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Jones, my <laughs> <Rock> voice. <laughs>